course it is going to be in our dragon spine I think I think I suppose also I hope that this video will not be very long because um, because I still need to finish my challenges with this quest and I don't have much time to play these days with all the Christmas preparations and um, a lot of videos in advance to shoot so so yeah I hope that this quest will not take too long but still will be very relaxing very relaxing very relaxing so my sweethearts i 
In other words, the warper flowers would ambush and then completely replace their victims, and then adopt their newfound identity, and then what? Go back to where the person lives, enter their home, eat their whole family. Paimon uh, <laughs> made up this story, but now Paimon is the one who is scared by it. <laughs> It's a good story. May I write it down? I may bring it up in future conversations. What for? Just to scare people with? Yes. You've got a real mean streak, albedo. So what's your story? Mine is a little longer than yours. It starts with an alchemist. A great alchemist once created subject one. Subject one was her proudest achievement and successfully planted into human society. No one ever would have thought that this friend of theirs was in fact a synthetic human. However, unbeknownst to subject one, the alchemist had tried the same experiment many times before he had come into being. Some of the rejects from failed experiments had been scared, discarded, but had not died. Subject 2 was one such failed experiment. He was swallowed by a great dragon that came to rest upon a snow-swept mountain. Many years later, he was resurrected by the dragon's mysterious power. He saw all kinds of people on the mountain, including Subject 1, who had somehow miraculously planted in among them. Okay. Never in Subject 2's wildest imagination had he thought it possible for experimental life form such as they to receive everyone so successfully. He saw the way humans accepted Subject 1 as a friend, witnessed their affection as they addressed him by name. This was what Subject 2 wanted. Now, all that Subject 2 desires was to replace Subject 1 and take the joy of his existence for himself. Oh, this is giving Paimon the chills. It's so scary. Subject 2 began to unfold his plan. He stole Subject 1's book and notes and studied all that Subject 1 has learned from the alchemist. Subject 2 was highly intelligent and he learned quickly. He changed his face into an exact replica of Subject 1's face. Then he found a plant with mimicry capabilities and transformed it using dragon blood and alchemy. And so, not only did Subject 2 transform his own appearance to perfectly match that of Subject 1, he also created a third entity, Subject 3. What? There's three of them now. But Subject 2 wanted to become a perfected human, perfected human. so he erased the mark on both his and Subject 3's necks. For these marks were symbols of imperfection. He purposely erased it. In my view, it was probably a subconscious act, an instinct. He so desperately craved to become a pure, perfect human being that he forgot something. Human beings are defined by their flaws. Subject 2's plan was meticulously crafted. Subject 3 would draw Subject 1's attention after Subject 1 disposed of Subject 3. He would assume the threat had now disappeared and would let his guard down. The next moment that Subject 1 was alone, Subject 2 would make his move. He would eliminate Subject 1 and become the only one remaining. He would secretly replace the subject one of everyone's memories and inherit his identity, residence, clothing, sword, name, and friends. People would have no idea that the individual they knew had become somebody else from one day to the next. Oh, oh, it is so scary. This is way too scary. Paimon's never gonna be able to trust anyone again. <clears throat> but just before Subject 2 
one could carry out his plan. A unique stranger entered the mix. Subject two tried to make contact with this person, but found that they could somehow sense he was different from subject one. What's wrong? Are you scared? What happened then? What happened to the stranger? He became a new stage in Subject 2's plan. One more person that Subject 2 had to dispose of. It's as if there were three identical roses in a garden. Only one of the three was a fine specimen, while the other two were defective specimens that bore poisonous thorns. In all the words, in all the world, only the gardener who tended to them could tell which was the good specimen. People do not like poisonous plants. Only a perfect rose can fetch a high price. Even inferior specimens wanted to conceal the fact of their worthlessness. They would have to take the gardener out of the picture using their poisonous thorns. This is exactly what Subject 2 was thinking, so he hid in the shadows and waited patiently. Maybe soon, he would get his chance to become truly human. This is not just a story. There are real events. Albedo is trying to tell me the cruel and unbelievable truth. Whew, that was intense. So what happened after that? Did Subject 2's plan succeed? Oh, Paimon can't bear thinking about it. Fortunately, it is just a story, and even in this story, Subject 2 did not succeed. But you can't never let your guard down on Dragon's Pie. Monsters mutated with Durin's power and blood are also cre creatures of Renetadir, just like me. You must be aware of all such creatures. Don't say that. You're not a monster. You're my friend. I'm glad to hear that. It's okay. I know what I am. You and I are both different. So there is no need for me to hide the truth from you. The only thing is that sometimes, when I think about how mighty the power of alchemy is, I feel so small, as being so set foot on in this world. How arrogant are we in desiring to control our destiny, and in desiring to create? Is creation an arrogant act, traveler? If not, why do we call the ones that created us and control us gods? If it is, then what quali qualifies us to call our ourselves creators? How far must we take our reverence and respect? And what purpose does it serve? How did you feel when you took out the imposter? Nothing special, but whenever I think about it, I feel a twinge of grief. Poor Albedo. Hello, traveler. Are you here? Hey, is that Amber? Though I might find, I thought we might find you here. We are here to deliver a message from Cyrus. There is gonna be a big event down at the base camp, and they want you there too, traveler. Winter camp is nearing its end, apparently. Even professional instruction instructors are required to attend. Looks like we need to go, Albedo. Bye for now. Then I won't keep you. I have some things to attend to here, so forgive me for not seeing you down. Don't worry about that. There have been no issues getting up and down the mountain recently. Is everyone ready? Let's now keep them. Let's not keep them waiting. Guys, sorry for mistakes. Okay, so the quest has just started. What? Okay. Um, let's go then. So, is 
Go ahead. You are one of their instructors, no? Okay, so this is a goodbye. <laughs> I hope that the wire of the microphone doesn't eat itself because sometimes it makes very unpleasant sounds when it does. Then I met Joseph. He'd heard the sound of me falling and came out to see what was going on. What? Whoa, so it was completely by chance then. I thought he must have been someone from the adventurers killed here for the event. But after a few words of conversation, it was clear that he was having memory problems. He didn't even know his own name. The temperature was freezing. The temperature was freezing, and there was no time to deal with all that there and then, so I convinced him to come back to the camp with me and figure everything else out after we got here. We got back to the camp, ran into Joel, moment he saw him, he froze for a second with this completely stunned expression on his face and then he started crying out, dead, dead. That's when Joseph suddenly started to remember. My memory is still not fully recovered, but Joe and his mother, they are the only ones that I will not know, but I cannot forget. Daddy. Daddy's right here, Joe. Daddy's right here. Joseph, don't you remember anything else at all? The poor princess feeding the foxes. I'm sorry, I have no, no recollection. Maybe it's because of the head trauma. I'm not sure. I woke up and found myself covered in blood. My things were gone, and there was nothing to indicate who I was or how I got there. I crawled into a cave and settled in for a slow recovery. After my legs and feet were a little better, my hunting skills 
Well, if the trailer isn't really interested, then uh, maybe I'll give this one a pass. It's just the weirdest request ever. No, but Pimans and Sadias are going go to waste without it. Without it. At the time, it would take me to research something like that. I could probably pick those and Sadias again ten times over. New research project to me is... Mm. Albedo. We meet again. Oh, Albedo. Thank goodness. So the situation is, Paimon wants a machine that can turn fruit into juice and keep the juice fresh. I mean, surely it's majorly important. That's what it is. If you can manage to invent this, we'll never have to worry about fruit going bad. Ever again. That's impossible. Oh. Where is the... star? What? What's going on? <clears throat> Interesting. That's impossible. Wait, his neck. The star was here just a minute ago. Turning fruit into juice is not hard, but keeping it fresh is more difficult. But if you simply want to keep the fruit from rotten, there are many ways to achieve this. Right, traveler? Your neck. <gasps> Again, the star. The mark is back. Is this a prank? What? What about his neck? What's wrong? Is there something on my neck? No, it's fine. From the look on your face, it's as if you thought I had just played a practical joke on you that was in exceedingly poor taste. So it was a prank. So you what? Albedo, you are saying. How do you stop fruit from going bad? Well, one way would be to bury your fruit on Dragon's Pine, where the snow never melts all year round. But then Paimon won't be able to eat them. <laughs> you could always live on Dragon's Pine. No, no, too cold for Paimon. Or you can give the fruit to me, and I would take it to Dragon's Pine for you. But since you don't like the cold, you'd have to send someone else to pick them up when you want them. This is where you come in, traveler. <laughs> Suddenly sounds a lot more feasible with our with other people doing all the work. Okay then, shall we go with that idea? Fruit buried on dragon's spine will stay fresh for much longer. However, it is also possible that the fruit will spread and grow into fruit trees. Or sprout. I don't know. Who knows, maybe the next time you visit, it will have grown into an orchard. You can water the trees, add a fertilizer, and when they finally bear fruit, you will have some fresh sunset yes. Ah, no way. Then Paimon will have to be a gardener. That's not the goal here. Oh, I don't think being a gardener is so bad. A gardener? I didn't expect Albedo to joke about this. Doesn't he care about what the mark means? Albedo, stop trying to get your hands on Paimon's super sweet sunset yes. Hmm? It bothers you, does it? Of course it bothers Paimon. There are the rarest super duper sweetest sunset yes ever. And they are not for you. Okay, but they are just sunset yes. I think you are only so attached to them because you don't have much fruit of this quality in your possession. When someone's pockets are full and their spirit is fulfilled, they don't easily fall prey to this kind of yearning. Yearning? Huh? Really? I see. That makes a lot of sense. Quest completed. So what was that? I wonder. Okay, so the challenge... Uh, the challenge is now opened. So, 
is just a prank or is he number one from his story or is he number two of his story <laughs> this is all so strange I cannot see his neck so yeah he has a star on his neck now so I really I don't know uh, let's talk to him Dragon's spine is still called for ordinary fruit trees to survive, but if one day Dragon's spine did become home to gardens and orchards, there would be more reasons for people to visit. Perhaps little life is the key to attracting people. Life may exist in all kinds of unfathomable forms and in all manner of unthinkable environments. Mysterious yet tenacious. Perhaps this is what makes life so special. And what? And that's all. I don't understand. <laughs> Guys, please tell me in the comments so what was it? Is this really a prank from Albedo? Or he's a transformed. <laughs> Number, number two from his story, or what? Okay, okay. Let's skip the dialogue. Alright, so, yeah, this is strange. And this strange story is over now. So, I think that I will complete my challenges from this quest. 